The Logitech Lift Mouse is an excellent ergonomic mouse that I've been using for the past six months. And originally, I thought I would just use this mouse for six months and then I'd switch back to the other mouse I had been using for forever. But after using this mouse for six months, I really like it and I'm going to keep using it. So I'm going to walk you through the best features of the Logitech Lift Mouse, some downsides I've run into while using it, and then who I recommend it for. The first reason I like this mouse is its ergonomic design. It's it's designed to put less strain on your wrist and fingers. And after six months of using it, I've actually had no pain in either my fingers or my wrist after using this mouse, like I would occasionally get with my previous mouse after a day of heavy use. Its design feels more natural as if the mouse just fits in between how my hand naturally rests. The button clicks feel nice and Logitech added two cool programmable buttons near where your thumb rests. Though in practice, I haven't really used them over the past six months because if you're not used to having extra mouse buttons, they're kind of easy to forget. If you're left-handed, Logitech hasn't forgotten about you and did make a left-handed version of this mouse in only the graphite color though. They also made a larger version for those with larger hands called the MX Vertical. And they have a nifty hand sizing guide on their website to help you figure out what your hand size is. The right-handed version of the mouse also comes in multiple colors to match Logitech's keyboards, like the MX Keys Mini, which we just did a review of. I'll link that review in the description below. And if you want to see more long-term reviews on computers and accessories, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to further support the channel, consider joining our six club membership program. Another thing about the Logitech Lift Mouse's design that I like is the materials used to make it. For the graphite color I got, Logitech used 70% recycled plastic to make it and they used no plastic in the packaging for the device. The next main feature of this mouse that I love is easy device switching. You can pair up to three different devices with this mouse over Bluetooth, which is perfect for me. I have a Mac Studio for the YouTube channel, a MacBook for work, and then a Windows gaming PC, and I can use the same mouse for all three devices by simply pressing a button. When you turn the mouse over, you'll see the Bluetooth pairing and switch button at the top. You hold it down to pair with a new device or use a short press to switch between three different devices. Below that button, you'll see the optical sensor power button, which I've rarely ever had to use because the battery life of the Lyft mouse is incredible. It's another reason why I love this mouse. I've used this mouse every day for six months, and it's still showing the mouse at 95% battery when I log into Logi Options Plus, the optional software you can use with the mouse. At the back of the mouse, you can open up the battery compartment to see that it's only being powered by a single AA battery, which is seriously impressive. And Logitech rates the battery life for the Lyft mouse at two years, regardless of whether you use a Bluetooth connection or the Logi Bolt receiver, which comes with the mouse and you'll see it in the battery compartment. The Logibolt receiver is something I didn't use for almost the entire review period, and I really wish I had started using it sooner. For the past two weeks, that I've been using it, it has become one of my favorite things about this mouse because it helps reduce Bluetooth signal congestion when connecting all different types of devices to my Mac. Before, when I was using my computer and had my Logitech mouse and keyboard, plus Apple's great magic trackpad and my AirPods Max headphones all connected simultaneously through Bluetooth, I'd constantly have audio cutouts with my headphones. But by using the Logibolt receiver, it pairs to both the mouse and the the MX Keys keyboard. And now I no longer have audio cutouts due to Bluetooth congestion. The last thing I like about the Lyft mouse is Logitech's optional software you can use with it on Mac and Windows called Logi Options Plus. This software helps you connect to your different devices, see your mouse's battery life, but most importantly, it lets you customize what the buttons on your mouse do. There are four buttons you can customize, the center button, the button behind that, and then the two buttons near where your thumbs rest. And not only can you customize these buttons, but you can use Logi Options Plus to make them do different things per app, which for me and my video editing workflows is such a time saver. You'll see I have the center button set 
set to pan for horizontal scrolling so I can scroll through the timeline. The button behind that is set to zoom my timeline to fit so I can instantly resize the timeline and see everything in it. And then the other two buttons switch between the two most used modes in Final Cut that I use, the blade tool and the select tool. I also really like that in Logi options, when you add an app, it'll suggest some app specific actions for you to assign to different mouse buttons. Also in Logi options, you can do other things like change your scrolling direction and speed, pointer speed, and set up Logi flow, which works in a similar way to Apple's universal control, allowing you to move your mouse between two computers, even a Mac and a PC. So that's everything I like about this mouse, but now let's talk about everything I don't like. Like. And the first downside I found with it is firmware updates. If you look at the mouse's settings in Logi Options, it makes you think you can update its firmware, but you actually can't. When you try and do this, you'll get a message telling you it couldn't find any supported devices, and it'll give you a link to a list of supported devices where the lift mouse is not listed, which is just confusing. And you just have no idea if there's even firmware available for this mouse, or if it's even running the most current firmware. The other thing I don't like about this mouse is scrolling. When you scroll with it on a Mac, you don't get that smooth inertia scrolling you're used to with Apple's mice and trackpads, which I really dig. When you stop scrolling with the lift mouse, so does the page, and it feels just a bit more abrupt compared to Apple's accessories. I wish Logitech would add that feature once, of course, you know, they solve the whole being able to update the firmware of the mouse thing. Overall though, for 70 US dollars, this mouse offers a lot of great features and it's one of the most comfortable mice I've ever used. It's a mouse I'd recommend to anyone who wants an ergonomic mouse and anyone who wants a mouse that you can switch between devices pretty easily. If you're interested in purchasing a Logitech Lift mouse, I've left links below where you can check current pricing as well as check out the larger MX vertical mouse for those with larger hands, as well as links to other devices I mentioned in this review like the Magic Trackpad, Mac Studio, and Logitech MX Keys Mini Keyboard. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more long-term reviews like this one. If you want to further support what we do, hit that join button to become a Six Club member. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other long-term reviews on computers and accessories by clicking the playlist to the right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.